Okay, this is the video I promised to share on the page. Um, here we are teaching how to make a senator top. For those of you that requested for this video, I will be very brief as fast as I can to make this video reach you. Now, you get to the desired fabric, you fold it, as you can see, I folded it into two. Now, my folding is, is, is dependent on my chest measurements and the inches of allowance I will add. Now, for this particular measurement, I'm using two inches. I'm using 42 inches as the person's chest. And then when you fold, you should have something that covers 10.5. That's 42 by 4 is 10.5 extra 2 inches your folding should cover minimum of 14 or thereabouts now when you fold you make sure that your fabric is straight if it's not straight use iron to straighten it now the first step you do is to add 4 inches now these 4 inches you are adding is called your sewing allowance and your folding allowance now when you mark 4 inches downwards, you draw your line. When you draw your line, this line you draw, I just drew now is for my sewing and folding allowance. The next thing you do, you apply the person's top length. My top length is 37. You place 37 and mark. When you mark 37, you have gotten your desired top length. So automatically, from here to this edge becomes your working space. All the rest are not your concern for now. Now the next step you will do is to determine your flap, your armhole. Sorry, your armhole. The way I do my own, when I check your chest, for example, I told you the chest I'm using is chest of forty-two. Then shoulder of eighteen top length of 37 sleeve length of nine and a half round sleeve of 14 the neck my neck I'm using 17 for my neck now I will tell you how to input these parameters inside this float now, first step you do, after you add your four inches, like I said initially, you put your top length. Now, from here to here, it becomes your working space. Now, the next step you do is you go to your chest measurement. You look at it, you have 42. Now, for you to have a perfect armhole, for you to have a fitted armhole, any armhole that falls within the range of 40 to 42, 10 inch or 10 and a half inch armhole is ideal for it. For this person, it's a slim guy and it's not rich. I'm using 10.5 for his armhole. Now I'm marking the armhole 10.5. Now, when I make the armhole, you draw your line. When you draw your line, automatically here it becomes your armhole. Now, remember, we are divided by four. I want to apply my chest on this on this line. This is called the chest line. Now my chest is 42 by 4 is 10.5. You apply I apply my chest. Extra 2 inches. The next step you do, you go to your top, the line you drew on the top, you apply your shoulder. Shoulder is 18 by 2, is 9. You add half an inch for sewing allowance and joining of the sleeves. That's, I'm having nine and a half here. Nine is eighteen plus half, which is nine and a half. The next step you do, you join the shoulder to the real chest, the real chest, with a straight line. Note better, this line must not be straight. Neither will it be too slanted. It must have, it must be in, in, in line with this shape. Now, from this chest line, you mark two inches upwards. From the intercepts, you mark what are Quarter, quarter inch here yeah. now you join this tip this tip and this tip together to get a semi curve 
or an arc for those of us that did engineering courses. Now you come to this line, you slant the shoulder by two inches. The reason for this slanting so that your clothes will, will relax on your body. If you don't do it, you will not get a perfect outfit. Now, time to concentrate on the neck cutting. The neck is 17. For me, the best way I use to determine my neck, that's the formula we use, is called half of pi arrow squared. If you have your time to input the, the arrow is the radius, which is half of your neck. If you have your time to work this out with your neck measurement, you will get a value in the range of 3 point something or thereabout, depends on how you are manipulating your formula. So this, this is formula for working this, but I don't use this, so ignore this. So what I normally do now is from the um, measurement I have, I'm using 2.7 by 3.2. Now, convention will tell you that when you use 3 inches by 3.5, you get a perfect neck. Yes, yeah, fine and good. But bear in mind that you have to do facing turn up. And by, by when you cut 3 inches, by the time you put your face in, you, you will now surpass 3 inches this, this way and 3.5 this way. So the best thing you will do, you put 2.7 for now and 3.2 for now. Then by the time you put your face in, it will now encroach to this point and this point. If you check, this now will give you 3 inches and 3.5 at exact. You now join. But what I said initially was, I am cutting my neck of 17 with 2.7 this way by 3.2. 2 or 3.3 downwards now from here some of us might find it difficult to make an arc in this form now if you are finding it very really difficult to make an arc in this form the best way you do it is you draw a straight line you draw a straight line this way now you are having a rectangle triangle from the intercept here you make an arc as well quarter inch then from here, you join the curve. Have you seen that? What I just did with my dotted lines are also the same thing with when I'm joining. Now, this is for the neck. Now, that's what we call flap opening by the side of the float. It's usually 13 inches, depending on the person's top length. Mind you that this is a measurement of large. It's not a medium or extra large, so I'm using large measurement to do this. Now I'm marking 14 because my top length is 37. 14, I'm marking 14 from the armhole, from the armhole downwards, from the armhole here to downwards. I'm marking 14. Now why I'm marking this 14 is because of my top length is long. Now I take the total of this from here to here is 12.7. I take it down to this point, 12.7. The same thing I apply for here, type 12.7. Now when I apply it, you just draw a straight line. Now, this is the front piece of my clothes. Now, from all you can see now, when I cut these things off, I will use this and place for the back. The only difference I will do on the back is that I will add 2 inches upwards. So, I'm cutting. Now, this is the front. And this is where you have to do the most of your work. After cutting this, in my next video, I will also show you how to place the back. Now there is what we call armhole trimming. After marking your shoulder, you have to trim when cutting and as well after after sewing before you put the hand in trim as well. So for this particular one now, I'm going to also show you the trimming. 
the trimming should be in this form. It should not be. It should not be more than 1.5. Now, when you see my trimming, you can get the measurements. I'm having it to be around 1 to 1.5. So I'm trimming. The need for this trimming is to enable my clothes to relax perfectly well on my body without any folding. So as you can see, this is the front part of my clothes. Now, this is the front. Let's open the front. Now, quickly, I will rush and cut the back as well. Let me make the video at once and send across. So, I'm using this as well. You just fold. Nothing much. I fold. When you fold, you take your time. Relax your material. And when you place your back, make sure that the back and the front are equal. Once it is equal, you now have to start your measurements. I'm taking my time to make sure I'm not making mistakes. Okay. Now, this is how I am going to cut my back. Now, this back you are seeing now is something that you don't have to do much work on. Now, the only thing we do on the back is come to the tip of the clothes, add two inches, add two inches. Take the ruler, draw a straight line joining it. After joining it, you take your ruler as well, extend the neck upwards. Note very well that this neckline should be in line with this. It should not surpass this neck for coherence. Now you come here, mark 1.5 downwards. You make your curve, you make your drawing. Now, all you need to do is just to cut exact of this. The back of the front should be equal. Only length towards that the back should be two inches taller than the front. Now you cut. Now you cut. Sharp scissors. So as well, learn how to use a sharp scissor, but don't discard whatever thing you want to Now this is how I am going to do it. Now, as you can see, I'm done cutting this. So when you now fold this together like this, you will notice that you are having a rhyming neck here. So that is the problem. Now, thank you for watching. Next time we continue.